Hey, it's Jim with CyberEcon. Today we're going to keep looking at Security Plus exam objectives, and today we're going to look specifically at DNS poisoning. So let's jump right into those slides. This is Security Plus training, compare and contrast types of attacks, which is domain one. This is topic uh, 1.2 types of attacks, and this is specifically DNS poisoning. DNS is the domain name system, or DNS for short. The DNS servers translate IP addresses from common human readable names like google.com to its IP addresses. In this attack, the attacker attempts to change the DNS record to show incorrect information. This attack will redirect the victim to a bad website to steal information, media, their identity, or place malicious code on the victim's machine. The way a DNS resolution should normally work is Alice will query for a website like google.com. Uh, it'll check the local computer to see if that name has been resolved. If it doesn't find a resolution there, it will go to the router, which is normally in a small office or a home office, an access point that also has the DNS server, and it'll ask that DNS server who is google.com. If that DNS server doesn't know who google.com google is, It'll be forwarded to a top-level domain DNS server, something like .com. That DNS server will redirect the traffic to a DNS server that knows who Google.com is. In this case, we see that DNS server 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is one of Google's DNS servers. Uh, Alice's request will go all the way out to that server, and that server will respond with the IP address that Google.com is using. And this is important because traffic can't be routed across the internet based on the human readable name or google.com. It has to have the IP address. So in this case, the DNS server will look in its record and say google.com is 172.217.164.142 and it will send that information back to the, the system that requested it. So in this case, the router will update its routing table to google.com is that IP address. If there's a local DNS server, that will be updated as well. And then on Alice's computer, the host table will be updated with the correct address as well. Um, this way, the next time that Alice looks for google.com, the computer can check its local host table and see if there's a record there. If there's no record, it can check the routing table or the local DNS server and not go through all that. So how does a hacker really work their way into this? In this case, we see Hank the Hacker. Um, they have hacked and somehow got control of the DNS server that Google owns at 8.8.8.8. .8 and they've rewritten a table that says google.com is no longer 172.217.164.142 to change it to an IP address that the hacker has that probably hosts a malicious version of a site that looks like google.com and that site is an IP address of 1.3.2.4. Uh, in this case the DNS record is overwritten to show that incorrect information and the next time a query is is sent from a local router or a local DNS that record will be written overwritten and then the computer that requested it that record in the host table will be overwritten so now all three of these tables have an incorrect IP address for google.com that leads to Hank the Hacker's uh, malicious site so this way when Alice tries to send a query to google.com or tries to access that page it actually goes to the IP address 1.3.2.4 instead of Google's actual address and that's where Hank can serve up his malicious content or some in some other way do malicious things to Alice's computer. So this is why it's important to protect against this. Uh, a lot of times we're using more secure DNS servers and we want to make sure that Hank can't get access to and overwrite those records in the first time, first place. So I'm Jim. With Cyber Econ, as always, we'd love if you like and subscribe. Throw some comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. Are you taking the Security Plus exam, or is this helping you in some other way? Also, hit the bell to be notified 
Uh, that'll let you know when we let new content out and share this information with your friends because we'd love to see more people uh, benefiting from the content we're putting out. So until next time, be safe out there and we'll see you next time.